Welcome to our worship on this, the Feast of Christ the King, the Sunday before Advent, the 22nd of November 2020, from St Mark's Church in Reigate. The annual cycle of the Church's year now ends with the Feast of Christ the King, the year that begins with the hope of the coming Messiah, ends with a proclamation of his universal sovereignty. The ascension of Christ has revealed him to be Lord of earth and heaven, and final judgment is one of his kingly purposes. The feast of Christ the King returns us to the Advent theme of judgment, which from next Sunday, the cycle once more begins. As you watch this broadcast, perhaps you could join in with the usual responses, with the hymns and with the Lord's Prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Grace and peace be with you and keep you in the love of Christ. We begin by singing together the hymn, Let all the world in every corner sing, My God and King. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. The kingdom is yours, but we turn away from your just rule. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The power is yours, but we trust in our own power and strength. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. The glory is yours, but we fall short of the glory of God. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together in singing the Gloria to a setting by David Thorne, the St. Thomas Mass.
the collect for the feast of Christ the King. Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom. God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service, whose kingdom has no end. For he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. Our first reading is brought to us today by Sylvia Weatherald. A reading from St Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing the hymn led by the choral scholars of St Martin in the Fields, King of Kings, Majesty.
Alleluia, Alleluia. You, O Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. Alleluia. A reading from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King. But what do we mean when we say King? How do we picture Jesus as King? He was killed as a common criminal with a charge, King of the Jews, fixed to his cross. He was dressed in a purple robe, given a crown of thorns and mocked by the soldiers. When he entered Jerusalem on the back of a donkey, they hailed him, Hosanna to the King of Kings. But what kind of king chooses poverty, powerlessness? What kind of king chooses to kneel and to wash his disciples' feet? Jesus redefined our whole understanding of kingship. Instead of gathering power to himself, he empties himself. He pours himself out for others. This topsy-turvy king humbles himself in service to others. We are invited to live in this upside-down kingdom of God, where the first will be last, and the last will be first. All who have been trampled, abused, overlooked or rejected in the kingdoms of this world will find themselves sitting at the top table 
in the kingdom of God. But how is this to happen? Is it all for some future heaven? Jesus spoke of the kingdom of God as being here already, happening in the midst of us. Sometimes we mistake our calling as citizens of the kingdom. If we're not careful, we can think that it is solely up to us to build or extend the kingdom of God in our time and place. But it's vital to recognise that this is God's work. Our calling as Christians is to open our eyes to recognise it, to participate in God's transforming work and to tell others the good news when we see it. It is in this context that it is appropriate that Smotes are launching their Christmas appeal this morning. As we listen to this appeal, reflect on what it means to be a citizen of God's kingdom where Christ is king. What can we do to participate in God's transforming work today? Hi, I'm Louise, one of the trustees of Smoke, St Mark's Overseas Aid Trust. We support self-sufficiency projects for the very poorest in the world. And I'm here to talk about our Christmas appeal, through which we're seeking to fund two of these projects, both in sub-Saharan Africa and both able to move quickly. 2020 has been a really challenging year for all of us. COVID 19 has been a pandemic that's global in scale and disrupted economies and healthcare services around the world. We've not been able to run events in the way that we ordinarily would, but somehow that makes this Christmas appeal even more pertinent and important. The first project is focused on enabling access to basic health services through mobile health clinics in Kakamega County in West Kenya. In Kakamega County, over 50% of people live below the poverty line and the population has been increasing rapidly, making the position ever more challenging. Healthcare is poor, with just seven doctors and 48 nurses per 100,000 people, which compares to some 280 doctors and 1,500 nurses for the same population in the UK. Malaria is the biggest killer, with high incidence of HIV and AIDS, along with high levels of mortality associated with childbirth, and a really high unmet need for family planning. Women and men often recognise they have more children than they want, but they're not in a position to make informed choices about the size and spacing of their families. That then gets coupled with intrinsic cultural beliefs, myths and misconceptions Beliefs, for example, that contraception leads to infertility, cancer, loss of libido, and that large families somehow demonstrate prosperity. Mobile health clinics offer an innovative way of supporting these communities to secure a range of health care. The way it works is that Chase Africa reach out and operate with a local Kenyan partner organisation, Community Health Volunteers. They identify and engage talented people from within the local community to become community health workers. And these health workers are trained and equipped to inform, educate and communicate within their own communities. They work door to door, talking to individuals and groups about what the clinic offers, including the benefits of family planning and dispelling myths and misperceptions. These community health workers pave the way and alongside there are announcements about the clinic at church, posters displayed around the region and encouragement through other local leaders such as teachers who inform pupils who in turn tell their parents. And there's a big effort put into letting the community know the exact date, including announcements on a public address system via a car. When the clinic does happen, the community health workers are then joined by a group of local doctors who come from Kenya's city hospitals for the day and they provide the healthcare service directly to the remote communities. They offer a range of services from HIV counselling and testing, immunisations, nutrition screening, treatment for malaria, respiratory infections, skin complaints, all the way through to cancer screening and referrals 
and of course the really critical family planning services. In one day, they generally managed to reach some 2,000 people, with around 200 receiving family planning services. The model, from beginning to end to support each clinic, costs on average £1,200, which is an average of only 60 pence per head, so really efficient, particularly on, for example, the family planning commodities. Our aim through this year's appeal is to fund at least two clinics, which would support some 4,000 people. There are many stories showing how the clinics have changed lives. Judith, for example, visited a clinic which, when she was left to care for her six children, having lost her husband in a car accident. She was inherited by one of her brother-in-laws, which is in line with their culture. But what the clinic did was enable her to make her own choice around family planning services so that she could focus on raising her four boys and two girls that she already had. And we know this model works because it's been operating since 2016. In both 2018 and 2019, through mobile clinics, they managed to support 110,000 patients. Sadly, this came to a really abrupt end this year in light of COVID, but the clinics have started up again in August and there are plans for clinics in 2021. The second project we're seeking to fund is to provide water and basic sanitation on Lunga Island in northern Zambia. It's a relatively new district and an archipelago of islands in the southeast area of Lake Banguela. It's incredibly rural with most people dependent on subsistence farming and there are no roads, no vehicles, transports by dugout canoe. Only 30% have access to safe water and less than 47% access to basic sanitation. To make matters particularly challenging, the island suffered really serious flooding in March 2020, with 3,000 people on Lunga Island displaced. People have returned, but the water and sanitation on the island is currently dire. Drinking water is collected from the lake, but this lake also supports bathing, it's used for transport, used by animals and used as a toilet. Some houses do have simple pit latrines, but the problem here is that when it starts raining, the waste moves to the surface and into the stream and lake where people fetch water. The model used by Afra Inspire to generate lasting change is to find a trusted local change leader. And in this case, that's Penelope Machipi, who you see here. Penelope's worked for Afri Inspire since her early 20s and she's been identified because of her integrity, energy and wider interests in others beyond herself. She's currently based on Samphire on the mainland which is on the edge of Lake Banguela and her grandparents came from the island so she's got really strong links. She's been visiting the wider area including Lunga Island to identify the most serious needs. After the flood she wrote... It's not easy to cope, especially when it happened at the same time when COVID's taken so much attention. People need food and shelter, but they also need water and proper sanitation. Here's a short video that's been made for us of Penelope meeting one of the islanders. I'm afraid the sound quality is quite poor, but it also does bring home the reality of the challenges. We don't have clean <laughs> but we'll maybe request to our view trees that we have uh, somebody coming on board, a stakeholder coming on board to just do maybe a pour for us so that we can have in this Complementary work is in hand through an agricultural training program and also to improve housing by building them in bricks, enabling the islanders to move from the reed-based buildings. But the goal of this second project is then to complement that and tackle the water and sanitation challenges. Specifically, our focus is to fund one and potentially two shallow wells on Lunga Island, where the need is greatest. Penelope has already coordinated the building of wells in Samphire 
using a local construction team of previously unemployed young men and experts. And using Penelope as the local partner, the intention is to do the same on Lunga Island. The cost of each well is an estimated £1,350, which includes materials, equipment and modest salaries for the labourers. And each well to date has typically provided water for 1,000 to 1,500 people. So that's about £1 per head. The people of Lunga Island have also already identified designated sites such as that marked here, where the wells would go. The challenge is that the community just don't have the funding. Our goal is to see if we can raise funds for two wells and then also any additional funding would be used to support sanitation improvements. We're conscious this is a challenging time for all in light of COVID. So we're particularly grateful to you for listening to this Christmas appeal. And we're also really, really grateful to all of those for your unwavering support over the course of the last year. Against this backdrop, we're keen to remind ourselves of Smoke's purpose in supporting self-sufficiency projects for the very poorest in the world, knowing that they're facing the challenges of COVID on top of challenges around meeting basic health needs and water and sanitation. If you'd like to hear more information about how to support this appeal, or simply to find out more about Smoke, we'd love to hear from you. You can find more about us on www.smote.org.uk or equally find us on our Facebook page. Thank you for listening. We now sing the hymn, Jesus Christ is waiting, waiting in the streets. Jesus Christ is waiting, waiting in the streets. No one is his neighbor, all alone he eats. Listen, Lord Jesus, I am lonely too. Make me friend or stranger, fit to wait on you. Jesus Christ is raging, raging in the streets, where injustice spirals and green hope retreats. Listen, Lord Jesus, I am angry too. In the kingdom's causes, let me rage with you. Jesus Christ is Our faith is in the living God, and so we declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. 
we believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us with confidence present our prayers and supplications to the throne of grace. Cherith Baldry leads us in prayer. O oh God, our Father, we thank you for waking us to see the light of this new day. Grant that we may waste none of its hours, soil none of its moments, neglect none of its opportunities, fail in none of its duties, and bring us to the evening time undefeated by any temptation, at peace with ourselves and with you. This we ask for your love's sake. Lord, hear us. We pray for the Church, that in this time of turmoil and sickness throughout the world, we can shine as a light in the darkness. We remember especially those Christians who stay faithful in times of stress and danger, and pray for those who gave their lives for Christian ministry. Lord, hear us. At the launching of our Smoked Christmas Appeal, we pray for the Smoked Committee and all the helpers who work so hard for this major fundraising event. We pray also for the success of the two projects they have chosen, and for all people throughout the world who lack access to food, clean water, medical services and education. Lord, hear us. We pray for our local community, remembering especially those in need, the homeless, those who use our food banks, those who have lost jobs or businesses because of the coronavirus. And in our parish cycle of prayer, we remember those living or working in Fairford Close. Lord, hear us. We give thanks for the new COVID-19 vaccinations that are becoming available and for the work of doctors and scientists who have made this happen. Also, we pray for the sick, especially Jean Hovey, Alison Stagg, Esther Lyons, Yvonne Powell, Janet Burns and Jackie Wimes. In a moment of silence, let us ask God's blessing on any others known to us. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who have died, especially Elsie Wood, Ernest Packington, Wallace Armstrong and Cyril Peter King, whose anniversaries fall at this time. God grant that we may all meet again upon another shore and in a greater light. Lord, hear us. O God our Father, let us find grace in thy sight, so as to have grace to serve thee acceptably, with reverence and godly fear, and further grace not to receive thy grace in vain, nor to neglect it and fall from it but to stir it up and grow in it, and to persevere in it unto the end of our lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers in the name of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I now stood in the tower, the tower entrance, and I'm standing next to what might look like a crucifix. And you've probably passed it many, many times and perhaps never given it a second glance. But actually, it's not a crucifix. It's actually known as a Christus Rex or a Majestas. Christus Rex means King Jesus and Majestas means Majesty. But why am I using those terms for it? If we look a bit closer, we see that Jesus is not naked or in rags, 
as he would normally be portrayed in a crucifix, but he's wearing royal robes. He's not wearing a crown of thorns, but a kingly crown. He's not nailed to the cross, hanging down. He is on the throne of the cross. The cross has been transfer transformed from an instrument of torture and death to a kingly throne. And so his arms aren't outstretched being nailed to the cross, but outstretched in embrace of all of us. This is Christ reigning in glory, transforming everything. So perhaps next time you come into the church through the tower, whenever that might be, perhaps you might just want to pause for a moment and look at this image of Christ the King. And so now we sing a hymn that really speaks about Christ the King. We sing Christ triumphant, ever reigning, Let us pray. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruits of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Christ, our King, make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love and pray for this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.